As kids, we've all looked up to our parents at a certain point. They're always there for us during our best times, our worst times, and unfortunately, even our most embarrassing times. The point I'm making is that if you're a parent, you have a duty to love and care for your child, no matter how old they may be. After all, you only have one chance to be a parent. So what happens to a child when they're deprived of their parents? What happens when a child loses their loving parent and is left alone with an unloving parent in an abusive house? Hi, I'm Cloud Sensei, and today I'm going to be doing an analysis on the character Lee Sangmin, one of the main antagonists from the Manhua Medical Return. Before I continue on with the video, I want to put up a spoiler warning because of how hard it is to talk about the character without getting further into the story, so I suggest you read the story before continuing since it's already finished and you can click back to the video at any time. I'll be mainly talking about the Manhua and not the Laimo since that's what I mainly read to do the video. And with that out of the way, let's begin. We start off with our main character, Kim Jin Hyun who's regressed to his middle school days thanks to the help of a fairy goddess that he saved in his past life. In this second life, he vows to be a better son to his parents and works hard to give them a good life. As I said before, Lee Sang-min is the antagonist of the story. In his previous life, he and his gang targeted Jin Hyun and bullied him all throughout his high school life. In this new life, he tries to do the same but is instead beaten by Jin Hyun instead. From that point on, their relationship takes a weird turn. Instead of taking revenge on him, he resorts to more petty attempts such as calling him a nerd, buzzkill, square, just about anything to get a reaction out of Jin Hyun. As they continue to interact with each other this way, Jin Hyun learns more about Sangmin's situation and comes to understand him a bit more. This doesn't mean that they're friends however, as stated by Jin Hyun himself, they're more like acquaintances if anything else. So although Jin Hyun believes that he and Sangmin are on good terms, does Sangmin feel the same way? Well, the simple answer is yes. Sangmin does look at Jin Hyun as someone he can trust, but still views him as someone he needs to beat, an obstacle if you will. He views Jin Hyun as more of a nuisance than a rival, with him even going as far as poisoning him before their college entrance exam just so he would repeat a year. Yikes. To understand why he's obsessed with beating him, we first need to take a look at his childhood and how he became who he is now. You wanna jump the shark? You wanna know my stupid crybaby backstory? Knock yourself out! At an early age, Simon grew up in a small village with his mom. We can assume that he lived a fairly happy life with his mom and would have continued this way if not for his father. The two suffered constant mental and physical abuse from him, his other son, and even his other wife. This would later lead to her developing schizophrenia and would need to be hospitalized throughout most of her early teens and eventually passing away during his high school life. At that moment, he vowed to avenge his mother by taking over his father's hospital from his half-brother and leaving the two with nothing. With nothing to lose, he focuses solely on his studies so that he would be number one in his classes. But the reality of this is that this wasn't his story. This was Jin Hun's story. In his previous life, it's assumed that Sangmin's plan succeeded, but in this regression, the future has changed. Jin Hyun stood up to Sangmin, becoming one of the best doctors in the world, and was regarded as a genius who appeared once every million years. He was someone who, no matter how much he tried, could never surpass. In this life, he would always remain in second place, if we can see how this has affected his mental state. It's never mentioned during what time frame his mother died, but we could assume that she died during Sangmin's last years of high school, as this was when he poisoned Jin Hyun. He was desperate. He needed to stop pulling his punches. It didn't matter who would get caught up, as long as he was able to beat Jin Hyun, his revenge could finally start. His efforts however were always stopped by Jin Hyun, and after countless failures, he would finally resort to getting rid of his best friend. As one does. But even this plan would ultimately fail, as Jin Hyun was protected by the fairy goddess. She not only saves him, but also places a curse on Sangmin for bringing harm to Jin Hyun. This is when we start to see Sangmin's health take a drastic dip, as the curse from the fairy goddess causes Sangmin to develop schizophrenia, the same disease that took his mother's life. This curse would persist for the next few years during this time, and we can see how much of a toll this has taken on his body. Throughout this entire ordeal, the only person who stood by his side was his girlfriend, Yeon Hee. She would be the only positive influence in his life, and someone who genuinely cared for Sang Min. And although I wish he and Yeon Hee would end up together and lived a happy life, this relationship would not last long, as his fate with Jin Hyun would come back to its final conclusion. I cannot be good. I must be perfection. With nothing left to lose, Jin Hun confronts Sang Min, and from here, we get to see his real thoughts, what he really thinks of Jin Hun, and just how twisted he truly is. He lets Jin Hun know how he actually feels about him. Years of resentment and trauma come out, and after all is said and done, Sang Min gives Jin Hun the ultimate choice. One of them would walk away today, and as he begins to count down, the two look at each other, getting ready to shoot. But as he finishes counting down, the two didn't shoot at each other. They sit there in silence, staring at each other. From here, we get a glimpse of an emotion that we've never seen from Sangmin. We see an empty, bitter expression from him. He's tired of the curse. He's tired of being controlled by his father. He's tired of living. My pain is still far greater than yours! So, what are my thoughts on Sangmin? From rereading the Banhua itself, Sangmin 
is someone who needed help. From an early age, he lost his mother due to constant abuse from his father and his family, causing her to develop schizophrenia and forcing her to be separated from him. It's all your fault, you filthy bastard, dirty blood. He would constantly be berated with words like this, and with no one to protect him, he would learn to take actions in his own way. At a certain point, this would cause him to develop psychopathic tendencies at a young age, with his first kill being his father's first wife and eventually his half-brother later on, two people who were the cause of his mother's mental breakdown. His tendencies would progressively get worse as he would murder animals and show no remorse in putting his patients in danger in order to get rid of Jin Hyun. Sang Min is a product of his environment. He never got the help that he needed and was left all alone in a home that didn't want him, turning him into who he is now. So is this the end of his story? Well, no, it isn't. Years later, we see an older Jin Hyun. He comes to a remote island to give the locals free medical treatment with his son. During this time, he comes across a man with a burn on his face at multiple occasions. He seems familiar to him as every time he sees him, Jin Hyun feels uncomfortable around him. One night, Jin Hyun strolls to the beach with a drink in his hand and there he sees the man again. He walks up to him and offers him a drink and the man accepts it, saying that it's his favorite drink. Jin Hyun wants to ask if he was who he thinks he was but doesn't. There was no point in confirming if he was who Jin Hyun thought he was. To him, that relationship is a distant memory, something that has long passed. Putting the stop behind, the two of them enjoy their drink, looking at the beautiful night sky. And that was the story of Sang Min.